Well, thank you very much, Peter, for the <laughs> your kind words. Uh, yes, I mean, I know this guy, I mean, for, we know each <laughs> other for 30, 35 years. I mean, the uh, first time we met, I mean, really met was, I said, I mean, when I was a visiting scholar here in 84. So, it's a long, long, long time. I mean. <laughs> uh, so, f before starting, I would like, there's PowerPoint, oh, I mean, I'm not sure uh, I would. Right, right, there, right there. Oh, it's, uh, before I start, I mean, I would like to first to thank I mean, the ANS for inviting me for this lecture and for the rest. And also say that uh, uh, the I'd chosen the title of this, uh, this conference, I mean, uh, let's see, yes. Uh, Renewing coinage by means of overstriking the case of Adrian Sistofori. Before, I mean, uh, I'd chosen this, before I knew, I mean, there would be the uh, the, the, this event, I mean, so I'm a <laughs> bit afraid, I mean, to talk about France of uh, Bill, uh, but uh, in a way, I mean, this, uh, this lecture would be a tribute, I mean, to his magnum opus, uh, yes. So, uh, yeah, renewing coinage by me, may we, may we um, could the, no, we, yeah, yeah. we could have just, just a bit? So before investing, uh, so I have to, I know I have to be, no. Before investigating, I mean, Adrian Sistofori, I mean, I would like to remind you what, what are Sistofori, of course, you know, all you know that. Uh, so it's a currency created by the Pergamon Kingdom and uh, Eumenes the Second, which circulated only in that kingdom. <coughs> So, as you can see here, the Sistofori have no portrait and were struck not on an adequate standard, but on a new standard of something like 12 grams 20. Uh, so, that d the date of creation is much uh, disputed. I mean, there are tenants of a uh, high dating in the period of the Peace of Apamea around 188 BC, and tenants of a low dating in the 160s, even in the 150s BC. Uh, well, more recently, I mean, it was Andy Meadows, I mean, 19, well, five years ago, I mean, uh, concluded that it is difficult to date the beginning of the Sistofori much before 167 BC. So, but this is not the problem today. <laughs> The date of the Sistofori. So Sistofori was struck mainly uh, in a few means in Pergamum, Sardis, Ephesus, Tralis, Laodicea, Licum, uh, Apamea, and probably Sinada. And a corpus of this coinage was provided in 1977 by Fred Kleiner, uh, working on the material collected by Sidney Pino and that was published by the, the American Numismatic Society in the series Numismatic Studies. That, that was Numismatic Studies number 14. So you, on the, on the screen, I mean, you see two, well, uh, some, some Sistofori, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm not going to, uh, to tell you, I mean, what you see on the screen. I mean, you, you know, of course, I mean, Sistofori. Uh, so one of Ephesus and another one of Ephesus, one under uh, struck under the Pergamon king, uh, Kingdom and one after, I mean, the province of Asia. Because after 133, I mean, means operating under Atlas III continued to strike Sistofori, uh, which became the coinage of the Roman province of Asia. And the production stopped in 67 <coughs> when command was given to Pompey to eradicate, I mean, the piracy from the Mediterranean Sea. And one feature of this command was the right uh, of access granted to Pompeii to all provincial treasuries, hence the interruption of the Sistofric coinage, which was resumed in the early 50s with what we call the proconsul coinage. <laughs> And she's and this so uh, we call that the proconsul. Well, it's usually it's called the proconsul coinage, 
uh, it's called a later Republican court. Stuffery by again by uh, this is the most recent because it's not pro council. All right, so I was not going to discuss <laughs> that. <as well. laughs> uh, so there are, you have this book, I mean, which was published, I mean, last last year, uh, and then after after this episode, I mean, uh, well, here are a few of these stuffery uh, with name of come oh on, there's some name of pro council. Caius Fabius here, uh, Lentulus, Imperator, uh, here with the name of a magistrate in Greek, and of course I put Cicero, uh, because this is one of the most famous systophory with the name of the orator, I mean Cicero. Marcus Cicero, Marcus Marcifilius Procos, he was Procos in Cilicia. Uh, another, oh. And uh, another one, I mean, <laughs> this, this is a uh, yeah, proconsul history with this, this name, I mean, uh, at, at, sorry, I can have no, oh, unless it works. Uh, it's yesterday it didn't wor really work, I mean, but it's okay. You have this name here. How it's you can read it as Atra, you can read it as Tam, but well it's Questor. I mean, you can see. You can see a Q here, it's a Questor, Questor, Atra, 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 or Tampa, you could read Tampa as well. We, we, we just don't know, but, uh, oh, uh-huh, yes, oh, great. Uh, what I, it's not, uh, what I, got from Bill's uh, corpus, I mean, is that I think now that this coinage, I mean, this series is not the last one, <laughs> but it was struck in, be in between 67 and, uh <laughs> and the early 50s. But we will re return to that one day, I mean, but um, that was quite interesting. Uh, <coughs> Then we know a coinage issued by Mark Antony, here is a, uh, probably in Ephesus in 38 BC. Then under the Roman Empire you have the Stuffery of Augustus, Augustus which were published by Sutherland uh, in 1970, uh, which should be revised now, I mean, uh, 50 years after, but that was uh, still, it's still a very good job. And uh, so a few one here. Uh, Sistophorus of Augustus. Uh, then, <laughs> then uh, Claudius, uh, Claudius, uh, the Flavians, Adrian, and thanks to Alan. Uh, you, 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 well, the portraits of Bill were made by Alan. As, uh, and uh, the last ones are from the Severan period, again published by Bill in the Revista Italiana de Numismatica in 1988. So he has uh, worked much on the Tistofori. Now, the, <coughs> the publication of the volume three of the Roman uh, provincial coinage, uh, devoted to the reigns of Nerva, Trajan, and Adrian, uh, offered the opportunity to re-examine the Tistofori coinage of Adrian. <coughs> And actually, I mean, the catalog of this coinage and Bill had, well, Bill had published so this, <laughs> uh, this corpus in, uh, in 1980, sorry, uh, which were, and presenting the most important of Adrian's provincial coinage in a systematic fashion. And he was the one who brought it up to date for APC3. So Adrian's Sistophory constitute the most important episode of overstriking in the Roman provincial silver coinage. So under this emperor, there are two main groups of Sistophoric issues. One, showing an incredible uh, typological diversity. Uh, one which was produ produced at more than 20 mints in the province of Asia. Uh, while the other, which is a much smaller group, 
uh, originates from Bithynia, where it was probably struck at two different minting places. But we'll, we'll return to this group later. So the production of Cystophory, I mean, uh, probably started in 128 and uh, probably ended in 130, I mean, probably for two years. I mean, well, we're not sure, but around this, around 130, let's say. So I will start with the, oh, this is the bibli bibliography, or uh, uh, Bill, uh, then, then a Corrigendum, we'll return to the Corrigendum, Nyssa, uh, the mint of Nyssa, <coughs> then uh, Telesphorus at Pergamon, New Cystophory. Uh, Adrian Nolte's, I mean, he has written a lot on this coinage, and the only insertion is a Fisher Bossert, I mean, with the new uh, Cystophoris of Alicarnassus and APC3. Uh, so, this is a map, I mean, where uh, you have all in red uh, the mints uh, operating, I mean, uh, striking <coughs> Cystophory for Adrian. Uh, sorry for that. <laughs> Rusty. Oh, it's no. it's kind of hidden. It's oh, there, there, there. Oh, I'm not in there. Okay. All right. So yes, uh, here is the province of Bithynia, and Nicomedia is here, uh, and this is this are the mints. Uh, uh, of well, at least something like 20 mints. I mean, uh, sure. I mean, sure means which uh, produce. I mean, the sulfury of Adrian. So the yeah, the Adrianic sulfury issued in the province of Asia are quite uh, very numerous. Their obvious legend uh, is. Uh, uh, I suppose we can see one. Uh, yeah, I'll return that. Legend is Adrianus Augustus uh, P.P. Adri or Adrianus Augustus Cos III. I mean, this is the, this is more or less the, the, the legend on these province, Asian historiography. In 1980, I mean, Bill was had ident identified, I mean, 15 mints, and historiography were also assigned to five others, I mean, called Anin unidentified means A, B, C, D, E, so that's 20. Uh, and the last section uh, consisted in unattributed systophory, that is coins which seemed at the time isolated <coughs> and could not be linked to minting entities, even unidentified. Un and the mint of uh, Nisa, uh, was withdrawn rapidly from the list and its production given to Sardis. And the case of Nisa is quite interesting. Uh, it shows the problem of determining I mean, the sites of the cystophoric mints. So oh. Bill reviewed, of course, I mean, the possible criteria. Uh, cystophory were produced in at centers of juridical, juridical conventus. Cystophoric means were established in connection with imperial visits. So none of these theories are is satisfactory, and typology is another criterion, and there is a good correlation between the series of silver and bronze provincial coinages. In fact, I mean, local bronze coinage, uh, or typology, uh, uh, was used to locate, I mean, a cystophoric mint uh, when there was a match between bronze and silver types. For example, I'll show you an example here. This is a this is a cystophory, cystophory sorry, attributed to the mint of Aizani. So why Aizani? Because if you're looking at the local bronze coinage, I mean, this the type of the Zeus is exactly. This is the type which you find. I mean, from Augustus to, well, Claudius here in that case, to Gordian. I mean, during three centuries in Aizani as this type. So, of course, I mean, uh, the correlation between the bronze and the silver is obvious here. So what happened in the case of Nyssa? 
Uh, Bill knew at the time, I'm not sure you it's an Issa. Uh, Bill knew at the time a unique Christophorus with the rape of Persephone uh, as design on the reverse. And as this design was also found on the bronze coinage of Nyssa, here is one from Faustina II, uh, but not, not under Adrian in Nyssa, I mean, but earlier in the first century AD, he attributed this uh, Sistophorus to Nyssa. But the second one, I mean, she faced, I mean, just after I mean, the publication, <laughs> of course, of the, his catalogue. Uh, acquired by the American Numismatic Society, with the same uh, uh, with the same design, but was with the same design, the rape of uh, Persephone, but whose obvious dye was identical with one used to strike two types, which sure, surely belong to Sardis. So here, here, what we have here. So this is new one, which. Which identical the die is identical with the coin, surely attributed to Sardis. Sardis, because again you have this type here, Demeter, is the recurrent type in Sardis, and so you must we must admit that the rape of Persephone uh, was struck in Sardis and not in Nyssa. Uh, so Nyssa disappeared from the list of mints. In fact, I mean, the use of uh, the rape of Persephone is a very Panhellenic type, it's not a local type. Uh, and in fact, the use of Panhellenic types, which are common uh, to determine a systophoric mint, is not a good criterion. If we return to the di design of Persephone, I mean, it was struck, for example, under Trajan and Adrian, four different mints, Hermo Capella on the on your left, or Julia Goddess on your right. So you could have chosen I mean, another mint from that Nyssa. Uh, hmm. So Nyssa disappeared, but since his book, I mean, new mints were identified in the last years. Alicarnassus. Uh, Alicarnassus here. Uh, why, why Alicarnassus? Because, again, of the local bronze, when you Septimus Severus, those are criers uh, on the local bronze and those are criers here. So the attribution to Alicanus seems quite secure. Or another Knidos, another mint which uh, appeared, I mean, published by Bill. Uh, Colophon Knidos, Knidos here. Uh, why Knidos? Because, uh, because of the bronze, again. Uh, you have the, this coin of Knidos here, and the coin of Caracalla and Plautilla, and the Knidian Aphrodite on the reverse. So the attribution to Knidos seems quite, quite secure. Uh, so, which means that in APC3, uh, APC3 cataloged the issues of 19, not, not only, not 15 as, but 19 means properly located and five still identified and uh, unidentified means a b c we maintain i mean the a b c d e and as well as unattributed histophory no uh, no histophory of the moment assigned to the conventus of Cizicus and adramitum which is a bit bizarre and we will probably return we'll return to that at the end uh, so, Bill at 127 entries in his catalogue, APC as 164, which so. Mm -hmm. That's for Asia. Now we, Bithynia. Bithynia, uh, sorry, for the, yes. Bithynia, all the systophory attributed to Bithynia bear the same obvious religion in the dative case, in in Caes Traiano, Caes Tra Adriano, Traiano Adriano, Augusto, PP. Most of the coins I mean, show the temple of the Bithynian coin and in, in Nicomedia, the reverse, uh, identified with the legend Combit, Commune, sorry, uh, here, Combit, Commune Bithyniae, 
uh, but if and of course you have the you have the bronze uh, uh, going on be going on be too near. I mean, so there is no doubt. I mean that the the bronze was struck in Nicomedia, so the silver is struck in Nicomedia as well. Uh, but a few of the reverse legend cost three. Sorry. Uh, cost three, and this subgroup called cost three group in scholarship displays a greater variety of designs. I mean, there are these two groups are, well, so this one with here, Bithynia, uh, sorry, Bithynia standing here, or here, Sabina Augusta, uh, sorry, I left the French here, <laughs> but uh, Sabina Augusta, the reverse. Uh, these two groups are obviously the product of two different mints, uh, maybe, maybe more, maybe more, which show differences, and they show difference in weight. I mean, the combit group is slightly heavier. Uh, well, I'll read first. So compared to the Bill's corpus, I mean, three new entries were added to the group Combit and four to the group Cos3. The most interesting be being, I mean, the presentation of uh, representation of Bithynia, which you have here, and of course, I mean, the occurrence of Sabina. So while the Sistopher is struck in Asia, all over struck, I mean, we'll return to that uh, phenomenon later. The Bithynian cystophory do not display sign of undertypes. This is certain for the combit group struck on newly fresh flans. Bill explained the phenomenon by suggesting that since cystophory had never before circulated in Bithynia, a fresh coinage was necessary. However, a coin of the second group was recorded by Bill as being overstruck on the cystophorus of Augustus, what was called an accident by the time is probably not an accident, as two new specimens recently surfaced, surfaced I mean, showing types, sorry, sorry, showing traces of overstriking as well. Uh, the piece featuring uh, the personification of Bithynia, uh, it's difficult to understand, but there are traces of us of a strike here, and an unpublished type, which uh, up, 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 uh, oh, uh, all right, sorry, up this one, and an unpublished type which surfaced, I mean, very recently, this one, uh, showing a galley with the legend Felicitati. Fe Felicitati Augusti on the reverse. And this one is clearly uh, overstruck on uh, Sistophorus of Augustus uh, with Mars Ultra on the reverse. And you have trace here. Sorry. Uh, here, Hult, you can read, I suppose you can read, Hult, here. Uh, so it, that was overstruck on the Sistophorus of uh, Augustus. And its obvious die is linked with the design Fortuna. Uh, this one costs three here. Uh, Fortuna, so these two coins come from the same obvious die. So we should not exclude the possibility that uh, the circulation of Cystophory was not limited to the province of Asia before Adrian, but that these coins had eventually come to be used in the whole of Western Asia Minor, unless this small group should be divided into even smaller groups. In that case, I would be inclined to place this small group, I mean these two coins, uh, uh, to Kizikus, the capital of the Sisyphean Conventus, which is lacking uh, a coinage, a systophoric coinage. Uh, so why Sisyphus? Sorry, so uh, Sisyphus is 
should be here. As you can see, I mean, there's no, absolutely no mint, systophoric mint here in the Cisis and uh, Adramitium conventus here. Nothing. It's blank. This is not normal, I would say. So I proposed, uh, why, why should I, well, why do I propose to put them I in mean, um, at least these two coins? It's not a small group. In Kizikus, because of the local branch of Kizikus, uh, this coin of Adrian uh, with the galley on the reverse. And if you look at the reverse, I mean, Felicitati Augusti or the Greek Eutychistatu Sebastu, uh, which is exactly, uh, exactly the same in Latin and Greek. Or if you look, uh, sorry, <laughs> the poor photo of kind of Sabina uh, in Kizikus, look at the portrait of Sabina here and the portrait here, uh, which seem to me very close. So uh, this is what I, ca I can offer to Bill, a uh, new, uh, new mint, Kizikus. Uh, so the main, the main purpose of the Adrianic Cistophorus coinage was to recoin worn coins, probably million of old Cistophory, namely those of Mark Antony and Augustus. Uh, in addition, I mean, three Claudian pieces are known to have been uh, overstruck, but the production of the Claudian production was not very important. So the dispersion of the Adrianic mints may, made this demonetization and recoinage, I mean, very easy. Adrian's coinage uh, involved a large number of dyes. Uh, oh sorry. Uh, oh why do I have that here? Uh, all right. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, just to show you, I mean, some, uh, yes. Uh, of a striking, I mean, we can most we, we don't recognize, I mean, the over uh, the the, uh, the under types all the time, but I mean, it's quite frequently. Uh, so, for example, this kind of al alicanus is a struck over struck on the Cistophoris of Mark uh, Anthony. Uh, this is very you can see here the uh, park Fonvir, which is that part of the legend here. Uh, or uh, here's kind of Smyrna of a struck on the system of again, Mark Antony, you, you see this, that part here, which is that part here. Or uh, of a circus again, uh, what well you see here, the snakes here. Or uh, Sardis of a circus coinage, uh, the temple here, you see. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, yes. So reverse of Augustus is here, obvious is here. And uh, last, uh, last one again. I mean, uh, Isaiah was struck on Sister Forest of Augustus. Uh, the, the, the temple here, you can see it here. So this is clear. Uh, this is clear. I mean, it's not always as much clear as that, but I mean, all the Adriatic uh, is for sure, I mean, except the Bithynian, where well, uh, uh, the real Bithynian, Nicomedia, are, uh, are overstruck on uh, pre well, ancient Cistophory. Oh, uh, the last case, uh, Yarapolis uh, overstruck on, you can see the bundle of. Uh, Grain stocks here, one, two, three, four, five, six, here. Mm. No, yes. S so Adrian's coinage, I mean, involved a large number of dyes, I mean, you can see here, uh, but much less than the production of Mark Antony and Augustus altogether. So this is new f uh, figures, I mean, N is the number of, uh, N number of coins, D is the number of dyes, obvious dyes, Grand, grand D here is the, uh, you know, uh, you, and this is 95. So, this, uh, the Mark Antony, uh, there were probably something like uh, be in between 600 and 1000 obvious dies which were carved. Uh, but NCD is very low, so it must be <laughs> probably more. Uh, Augustus figures from, yes, Augustus. Figure uh, one one 
zero nine is better, a bit better than uh, Mark Anthony. So, and if you and Adrian's figure, Adrian, Adrian's figure, uh, if you add this figure, I mean Mark Anthony and Augustus, uh, you are far from uh, the Adrianic total. So, which means that uh, and. Uh, our record of the dyes for the coinages for Augustus and Adrian is imperfect. I mean, as I said, I mean, uh, Adrian, uh, Augustus should be redone, I mean, 50 years later, and uh, Adrian's was made, I mean, 35 years ago. So there are new dyes, obvious dyes. So the difference, I mean, if we re that was redone, I mean, the difference would be even bigger. So, so which means that a considerable part of the Antonian and Augustan production of Cystophory almost 50% I mean, vanished and, uh, over the years. I mean, 0.5% uh, uh, per year, I mean, if we admit, I mean, a span of time of 150 years. So the well, <coughs> oh, sorry. the well known letter attributed to Adrian uh, from Pergamum uh, prohibited the money changers from making a profit of unworn coins, aspratura. Uh, you, well, you know this text, I mean, <laughs> which is here. I'm not going to read it, uh, but you can at least see here the um, aspratura. So which means that they had been, I mean, the money changers had been doing exactly that, uh, discounting worn ones. And Cystophory of uh, Antony and Augustus must certainly have been <coughs> very worn by the time of Adrian. Uh, they had been struck. They had been struck to stand out of uh, so almost twelve. Sorry, Mark Antony, well, almost twelve, twelve grams uh, as Augustus. I mean, no? So, and then it's with the way it declined, but Adrian, we come to 10.42. Uh, and So, which um, attest the state of wear of the coinage? I mean, uh, uh, a an, an attrition uh, rate of 1.01 gram per year. And we arrive to uh, the weight of the Cystophory of Adrian. So, in order to make uh, these worn coins accepted by at full face value, Adrian decided to restrike them for restoring a fresh appearance and recoining for the huge quantities of Cystophory was much cheaper and easier than melting them down and producing new flans. And decentralizing, I mean, the production was also practical and gave the opportunity to place special emphasis uh, on local cults. But of course, I mean, this flow of images on the Cystophoric, Cysto Adrian Cystophory was a secondary, secondary consequence of the recoinage, not its primary purpose. In that sense, I mean, the coinage was a recoinage. Huh? A renovation, as is indicated on Cystophory of the unidentified men C. And two types must be viewed against this background. So one is here, and certain means. Uh, this is a special Cystophory. So him, Kaiser Augustus, uh, with the head of Augustus here. And Adrianus Alpp Ren. Here, uh, Adri Adrianus Togatus. Uh, Adrian is shown yes, Togatus, uh, uh, either holding well, he's holding here grain grain of stalks here, grain stalks, or a rare variety which uh, turned uh, up fairly recently. Uh, this is the second variety. Uh, he's Augustus, again, I mean, him Kaiser Augustus on the reverse. And Adrian is called Pepe Ren. And uh, Adrian is sacrificing over a tripod with a patera. 
<laughs> so the expansion of the last word is not immediately obvious, and three diverging, I mean, interpret interpretation exist. It was proposed to expand Ren, as in Renatus, when only the first type was known, and explain the context of Adrian's initiation into the Eleusinian mysteries. Adrian was thought to proclaim, I mean, his rebirth, Renatus, uh, to eternal life. That was the <coughs> explanation when we knew only, I mean, this type. Well, one of the explanations, an, an old one. Then, uh, Mlasowski expanded in, Ren in Renovator, Renovator proposing that this history commemorate the, in the emperor's benefactions towards Asia Minor. But of course, this interpretation fails to explain the presence of, of the portrait of Augustus on the obverse. The correct is an interpretation is now adopted, Bill's one, expanding Ren in Renovavit, Renovavit, and connecting the legend of the coins with the renewal of the Sistophory coinage. Uh, his, in, his, interpret his interpretation makes sense of both sides of the Adrianic coins. The legend Im Caesar Augustus is a combination of the obverse and reverse legends of the vast majority of the Sistophoric types of Augustus. So these Adrianic Sistophory uh, reproduce the main type and the legend of a significant part of the coins which were renewed in the course of the large operation of overstriking. Adrian himself is shown on the reverse, sacrificing as the pious successor of Augustus, uh, whom he venerated and holding out corn hills uh, as the patron of the cities of Asia Minor, to which he had granted the favor of renewing their silver coinage. So except those two series, I mean, the old Sistophory continued to circulate with the image of Adrian. So I'll finish with that. Since the publication of IPC3, I mean, we have, uh, we have added, I mean, nine, nine, uh, nine entries were added four for Bithynia, 13 for, uh, uh, 13, no, so not, not nine, sorry, uh, 17 were added, and four for Bithynia, 13 for Asia. Most of them are uh, best varieties, but two show new reverse types, and I'll finish with that, oh, sorry. Two show new reverse types, uh, so we, this is the A number now that we have to uh, add when we are, want to add, to add number. I mean, we have an A number. Uh, so this one shows, I mean, uh, the temple of the capital in Tried, the Zeus, Athena, and Zeus, Athena, and Hera. Uh, and another one, which was unknown, shows uh, probably a genius, although, uh, I mean, this genius may be holding a radar and a cornucopia. Uh, but we can't, we can't assign, I mean, these new varieties of mint. Uh, so they lie in the, <laughs> they add to the uncertain, uh, uncertain <laughs> systophory. So I think I uh, want to close with that and uh, well show, <laughs> fi finish with this slide, which will probably re remind something to Bill. Uh, oh, <laughs> so that was, <laughs> that was 20 years ago uh, in South of France in Collioure. We, had the we were in Perpignan for the meeting of the INC, mm -hmm. and uh, so you probably, it's <laughs> Bill? <laughs> younger Bill, <laughs> younger Burnett, younger Armandry, oh and uh, uh, younger Gunther. Uh, <laughs> <Gunter. laughs> <laughs> so, um, yes. <laughs> <laughs>